Hey, so the first video today of the log loader in action. Uh, I've tested it without any weight on it and it works just fine, but today we're going to try putting a little weight on it. Got a hackberry log here, it's not super huge, but it's just to make sure everything's working kind of properly. It's not perfectly balanced on there, which is a good thing because, you know, rarely will it ever be perfectly balanced, but uh, this is one of the first videos in the series where we're going over turning a manual mill. Mine is a Timber King 1220, but um, the goal is that most people that have manual mills that they could add hydraulics of their own and try it out. Uh, it's really not super complicated. It takes a little bit of work, a little bit of patience, and a little bit of thought, but it is a good way to save the $20,000 or whatever the markup is for the factory to put hydraulics on. So I want to give you a quick walk around before we try and load it up, and then I'll show you what we're doing. All right, so this is the hydraulic setup as is right back here. Um, I'm gonna save doing the pumps for a later video. Um, I think I can get a little bit more detail here once I get things cleaned up a little bit more. Uh, but basically all it is is we got two 12 volt deep cycle marine batteries in here. They're in parallel. Um, so they're feeding these two pumps which used to be used for army targets. Um, they're actually the same exact pumps that Woodmiser puts on their supers. Uh, this, they're just double acting. We skipped the double acting, they're just operating in single acting and they're operating, these are also operating in parallel. Um, so we're doubling the flow and we're cutting, we're leaving the PSI as is. So the goal is that these just flow one way, it comes in this side of the valves, and then it goes out to the log loader, and then the return is on this side. So since this video is probably going to get published before uh, we actually talk about the pumps, I just want to mention like what's running everything today. And it's this solenoid right here, which is run off of the ground side. Um, obviously it's got power in on the right and power out on the left. And this is just temporarily held in place here. This is just our trigger, our ignition switch right here. Just um, so our ignition switch over here uh, just fires up the pumps. And the best way to describe it is when the wood misers, when you press on the levers on the wood misers, it flips a uh, contact switch on the bottom of the valves. Um, we don't have any of that, and I'm not sure I want anything like that. So this is just a simple, I think, 50 amp ignition switch for like a tractor, and eventually it's going to go mounted up here next to the pump, and I'm probably going to figure out a way to make it even easier than that. All right, we're going to roll this log off real quick so you can see the loaders. So the loaders mimic a lot of the designs that you see on on other mills this is one of those if it's not broken i'm not sure i wanted to totally redesign it um, and all it is this is two inch channel um, or two inch tubing this is eighth inch thick i think it'll be all right because the span lengths aren't very long um, in between gussets so these Supports are all quarter inch stuff. They're welded all the way around on the inside and everything like that. Um, I really don't think we're going to have a whole lot of problems structurally. It's about five feet long. Um, just about right here we got channel that's this is three inch stuff, three inch wide. And it goes back these plates back here. I got them to drill the hole in the wrong spot so I had to redrill it a little further down um, but they're just kind of welded on the inside it's a little easier to see on this one um, they're welded on the inside which you're not going to be able to really see with the and I still got some metal shavings in there like I said this is just the trial um, and then we got those gussets welded up there so up at the top um, this is just connected with a half inch pin might go five eighths if it's a problem, but there's not really a whole lot of weight that's actually on this pin. Um, I was thinking that I was going to use three sixteenths inch stuff. That's why you see this kind of bowed out because I ended up using quarter. 
uh, and this channel, they had a little bit wider channel than I was expecting them to have. Um, so if I can get it to focus in right there, yeah. So basically it, it just bowed out a little bit, but not a big deal. This is 3 16 inch plate. Um, maybe I could have gone a little thicker, it's welded. This is one of the only things that's welded to the frame. So I welded these plates to the frame and my goal was to pretty much avoid doing anything that wasn't bolt on but these ones I didn't really trust doing it any other way so they're all welded and then this design up here I got them to cut it this way to kind of save a little bit of space so like I said in a previous video I would get all my stuff cut at the local steel supplier it just saved a lot of headache by them doing all the cutting all the CNC cutting and it really wasn't that much money at all but then I could just kind of get it and tack it together immediately so these are used cylinders that I got when I got the pumps from the, the same person um, they're a three inch bore they're eight inch stroke um, and just because of the fittings that were available at the local Napa um, I had to run 3 8 inch hose out of the top and I got quarter inch on the bottom. So you probably see that 2x4 underneath there and the reason for that is just because the front of this is way, way more uphill than the back just because the ground isn't perfectly level. Um, and the 2x4 I'm always going to keep little blocks of wood like that because the last thing I wanted to do was make this too long so that if I'm ever on the short side, on 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 the loader side, um, if that if this support can't go all the way down, it's going to be a problem. So, in this condition, we should be good to go. I'd say this is my main mistake with this is so far is uh, the proximity that I place this to this jack means that when it's in the down and right now even when it's in the up position, I can't rotate this handle. Um, which is kind of an issue. So I don't think that's the end of the world because I'm removing all these handles anyways and just putting a fitting on there that I can use a drill. With eight of them, it'll make it go a whole lot quicker. Uh, and then you also don't have, especially on these back ones, won't have the handles dragging the ground. All right, so we're gonna raise it up real quick. See the mill head is right over where the, where the loader arms are gonna come up. And I just want to show what that's going to look like when the mill is in that area. So when you have the loader up and you want to put boards on it, how that's going to look. So let's just press the button and go up. Okay, so as you can see, um, we really don't have any issues. If that blade guard was all the way out over here this blade guide was all the way out we might run into some issues um, but by and large it should leave us enough room that being said if you can see right here make it a little easier when you walk around so got a rabbit down in there um, when this is extended and it extends up a little bit further than that um, but it's really a little too high hey buddy what's up um, I never wanted to have to try and pick things up from the loader and get them on to here so I'd rather it just fall straight down but right now this is a difference of about two and a half inches three inches um, so sometimes that might be a little difficult when it comes to bringing stuff back. So I'll show you this measurement. So the measurement from this pin to the back of the log loader is about uh, six and a half inches. Really, you can shorten that up. It depends on what your mill is, but just make sure that your pin height to the top of your bunk is the same as your pin hole to the end of your loader here before it turns. And this is all one single piece of steel. Just had a, just cut it with a grinder, bend it, 
uh, welded it in, and then put the gusset plates on. So I did that on both sides. All right, so let's see how it does picking up this log. This is the big end. It's about 16 inches on the big end, so nothing big. And it's about 13, 14 inches, depending on which way you go. 13 inches on the small end, give or take. So nothing big, and hackberry isn't super dense anyways. Okay, so we got the log loaded up on there. If you can see the hoses are facing out towards the log right now. I, I'm gonna drill some holes in the channel and they're gonna be facing back the other way. Uh, but I just wanted to check it out, uh, make sure it works before I did that. Okay. All right, so I'm always stopping at the top because I don't want to keep loading it on and off the bunks, but this time I'll go all the way to the top, show you what it looks like if you would go from the, from the bottom, from the ground, all the way onto the bunk. So there's your angle, doesn't really get any steeper on this, but it's pretty easy to push it at that point. We'll probably actually go down a little bit. All right, so we'll lower this back down a little bit to get ready for cutting. 